Good morning. I'd like to read for your enjoyment the uh, devotional scripture coming from Psalms 37, the third, fourth, and fifth verse. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will do this. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Please bow for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We thank you for this day that you created. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being your children and knowing that we can call upon you. Father, we ask that you would be with us as we prepare to issue our viewers into worship. We ask that the songs that we sing, the scripture, the prayers, and especially the word will penetrate and touch hearts, Father. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for the word that you've given him. And Father, as we get ready to uh, embark upon this service, we pray that everyone that is listening and viewing would feel your Holy Spirit, would be ready for worship, Father, and that they would take in everything that you've prepared for them. Father, again, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you in your most holy and precious name. Amen. Amen.
the psalmist says in Psalm 37, verse 25 and 26, he says, I've been young and I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. But then I also like uh, what Solomon says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10, he says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all of thy increase. Listen, uh, the last few months have been some months of unpredictable uncertainty. But one thing we can all be certain of is how God has provided, how God has sustained. Amen. Not only in your personal life, but I am wanting to rejoice over how God has sustained his church and the body of Christ yes. during an unprecedented yes. pandemic and economic turmoil. Yes. God is certainly good, but let me tell you how God provides. He provides through you and I. Amen. He sustains his church and the body of Christ through you and I. So I want to encourage you to continue your faithful and dedicated giving. As you give to God, God will richly and abundantly bless you. Listen, we have a number of ways in which you can give online through our website. You can also send it in through our post office box. But listen, God will bless you in a wonderful and mighty way. And your way of thanking him for sustaining you during some difficult times is simply to give unto him and he'll return it to you a hundredfold. Amen. Amen. Well, here's some more from my music ministry and then I'm excited to give you a word from the Lord on today.
There is a word from the Lord on today. I know many are asking the question, is there a word from the Lord? And I've got good news for you. Uh, the Lord has a word for you. Uh, the Lord has a word for every one of our situations. And the Lord has a word for today. Amen. Uh, I'm going to invite you to join me in Proverbs, the 16th chapter. Proverbs, 16th chapter, uh, the 9th verse. And you'll find recorded these words. It says, man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. I want to talk about holding on with a loose grip. <laughs> holding on with a loose grip. Listen. Circumstances, my brothers and sisters, often will arise in our life in which we did not plan for. Circumstances we don't usually plan for, but guess what? God has already provided space for them. And when I say God has already provided space, what I'm simply saying is this. There are situations that will arise in our life that we didn't expect, that we didn't plan for, but God has already provided for those situations. And you and I need to understand that our plans are not God's plans. What God plans for me is often not what I have planned for myself. Listen, I know uppermost in your mind is COVID-19. Uh, we've also experienced racial unrest, a, a political climate that is topsy-turvy. And none of these things were on your radar. Look at your personal life in 2020. I know at the end of 2019 when you made your resolutions and your projections, I know that nobody had on their calendar that they would be stuck in their house for half of the year. Listen, we need to understand that 2020 has been a life-altering year. There are things that are transpiring in our life right now that are not momentary, they are not temporary. They will bring about permanent changes in our life that we did not expect nor anticipate. Listen, our plans are not God's plans. Listen, our lives are changed globally, nationally, personally, and spiritually. Listen, you and I were cruising along. Things were going well. Uh, young people were doing just fine, but all of a sudden, jobs were gone. We faced unemployment. Schools had to go virtual. Sports were taking off of TVs. Our lives have been changed. We plan, but God prepares. And so how we deal with the changes that come in life are extremely important. Listen, this, even as it relates to the church, is a period of time that will go down in the church's history as one of note. As we look back and reflect as the body of Christ, and even as a church on 2020, we need to understand that these are some similar moments in the body of Christ. God is changing us. God is redirecting us. And we will realize this is a significant period of note. It is a period of reassessment, a period of realignment, a period of revival, one where the church must reimagine herself, must see what is possible, and see the miraculous things that God can do. I want you to know something, that when society was shut down mid-March, God has miraculously watched out for his believers. That's why David said, I've been young, I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. And even the church God has sustained. God has held us. One thing I know, one thing I know for sure, is that whatever God is up to, it's not what many of us were expecting. Listen, sometimes your plans don't work out because God has better plans. And the way I deal with everything that's going on is I realize this. Yes, I've made some plans. Yes, our church has made some projections. Less. We voted on a budget for 2020. Yes, we put some items on the calendar. But whatever we plan, somebody needs to know, God has some better plans. I know you wanted to go right, but God said go left. I know you wanted to do this, but God said do that. We plan. But God has some better plans. Listen, this is going to be a 
very quick flight. A, a quick ascent and a short descent. You ain't got time for a nap or snacks. Listen, there are four observations. Number one, there is nothing wrong with planning. There's nothing wrong with planning. The Bible, nowhere, not even in the scripture says that we as believers are to plan. As a matter of fact, it says many are the plans in our heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. We are not simply supposed to let go and let God. We are supposed to pray. We are supposed to plan. We are supposed to prepare. So it is not an excuse for laziness. It is not an excuse to say, I'll simply have faith and let God do everything. Listen, we are supposed to plan. But when God alters the plan, as a matter of fact, God doesn't alter the plan. We make plans, but then God makes our plans line up with his already predestined and predetermined will. So when God alters our course, understand, God is already on the right course. He's just making us get in line with him. Two, there's nothing wrong with planning, but then observation number two, God's plans are always better than our plans. Jeremiah 29 and 11, uh, the children of Israel found themselves getting ready to go into bondage, and God uh, told Jeremiah, he said, listen, I know the plans that I have for you. Uh, thoughts of a future, thoughts of peace, and thoughts for hope. Listen, I know it caught you off guard. Something may have caught you off guard last night, but guess what? It didn't catch God off guard, because God is the ultimate plan. He made plans in eternity past that covers all the way to eternity future. So understand, God got this. You just simply need to trust God with all your heart. Believe not in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God, and God will direct your path. Observation three. God may choose to change your plans at any time. And God is not capricious. God is not arbitrary. He's not just trying to play with your mind and mess with your head. God has the right in his sovereignty to change your plans at any time. But guess what? When God changes your plan, God always changes your plans for the good. I know you thought it was going well, but guess what? When God flips the script, it might mess with your mind. It might throw you off guard. But guess what? If you trust God, you'll realize that when God alters your plans, God always changes it for your good. Understand something. That whatever God brings in your life is not for your destruction. It is for your betterment. Whatever God brings in your way by way of a detour or delay or tell you to slow down or hurry up, it is always for your good. Did not Paul say that God wants everything to the good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. But then observation number four, when God changes our plan, we can either resist or we can embrace. When God changes the plan, we can either resist or embrace. Listen, uh, the crucial moment for the church and the body of Christ is not pre-COVID-19. Crucial moment for the church is not even during COVID-19. The critical moment for the church is post-COVID-19. Are we going to go back to business as usual when God changed the plan? Because we go back to business as usual, it means that we think our plan and our projection are better than God. But guess what? Mid-March, God changed the plan because we wouldn't get in line with what God was trying to get us to do. But I'm so glad that God altered the plan. And guess what? When it's over, we don't be better than we were when we came in. Listen, Corey Ten Boom. Corey Ten Boom, prolific writer. She was a Dutch Christian watchmaker and writer. Corey Ten Boom was going about her business, uh, making watches and writing. Then uh, Hitler came into power and uh, the Nazi regime took over and there was what it was called the Jewish Holocaust. And so Corrie Tim Boom, her daddy, her sister, her family, uh, they decided uh, that they would get in line with what God was doing. And they began to hide uh, Jewish folk in their homes in order to keep them from being killed. But guess what? Corrie Tim Boom and her family, they wound up getting arrested. They wound up getting jailed. As a matter of fact, her sister and some of her family members were killed. She chronicles what she and her family did in her most important book called The Hiding Place. 
It is a biography of her family's efforts to hide those, but she believed that what they were doing was in the will of God. Corey Ted Boone was known for a number of pithy sayings and quotes, and one of her quotes was this. She said, hold everything in your hand loosely. Otherwise, when God pries it from your fingers, it will be painful. Listen, we need to understand something, that whenever we hold on to what we want to tight, whenever we hold on to our plans too tight, and God tries to snatch it from our grip, it's going to be painful. But if we hold on with a loose grip, knowing that God may change our situation, God may change our circumstance, but if God changes it, He's changing it for our best. Listen, the Old Testament saints were holding on with a tight grip to the law, but God had a better plan. It was called grace. He said, y'all can't live up to what I want you to do, but I'm sending my son to die on the cross for your sins, and I'm so glad that God altered the plan because all of my righteousness was as filthy rags. And because God changed the plan and allowed Jesus to die, it all worked out ultimately for our good. Amen. Somebody here, somebody viewing, you're holding on to your life with a tight grip. Salvation is about loosening your grip. And when you loosen your grip, listen, it can either be your grip or his grip. And understand that whenever you try to hold on, circumstances in life are going to loosen your grip. But his grip is secure. His grip is eternal. All those who come to him, he will in no wise cast out. Listen. The Word of God wants you to be gripped by the grace of God. And rather than holding on for dear life, allow Him to hold your life eternally and secure by giving your life to Christ. Father, we thank you for your Word. We pray, God, for those who need the free pardon of their sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. We pray for responses. We pray for deliverance. We pray for salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.